We back with DC strats for Night of the Lake. The season border guards are upped and we have minus 60% melee damage to all units. Let's be real though, it's really just carrying it upped. I will be going over the mechanics of the fight, some tips and tricks, and show some example runs. All of this will be timestamps, which you can find in the video description. So let's go ahead and check it out. Start off with, besides having all the Riz, this boss has no type. Also, Liz makes a special appearance to make sure that you cannot cancel out until she's done talking. Boss's basic attack is a multi-hit attack that some of the hits are actually delayed. Boss is special indicated by the blue bar underneath this portrait is an attack that strips shields and hits the farthest unit in the back. It does have more than one valid hit, so it can hit your ship. Boss's ulti is a full map attack. This can hit your ship as well. It can be iframed, and it can be canceled by a phase ship. This boss has three phases. In the first phase, he basically just uses his basic specials and ulti. During, once he loses a bar of HP, he will sit there and shift to the center of the map, where everything behind him gets silenced, 50% damage amp, and minus 200% attack. And if nothing's in front of him, he will sit there and attack your ship. Once this boss reaches his last bar of HP, he will shift into phase 3, in which he sits there and does a giant AoE hitting your entire team for a large amount of damage. Time for some stats here. The boss has 1.5 mil HP. In phase 1, he has 1864 defense but he loses all of that in phase 2 and onward but he gains 80% cat 1 res and 40% cat 2 res the boss should honestly be a sniper because he has 5.2 almost 5.3k hit for evasion he has 1.3k so th th basically that means your front line would need 24 23 above evasion which only few units actually have that or are capable of getting that for your dps you would need 2.4k hit a little over that in order to hit him at 100 percent evasion and then 1242 hit if you were to reduce his evasion by half be careful with the deploy at the start if you deploy too quickly, the boss will one-shot some of your team. You either need to wait for the first uh, basic, or deploy your units a little farther back. You can use Tempest S1 immediately at the start. It'll stay up all the way until the special, be able to tank the first special. If you're not using Choyina, you're definitely going to want to sit there and try to utilize the Tempest Soldiers from the ship S2 in order to tank one of the specials. If for some reason your Orca lives Phase 1, you have a short period of time during the phase transition in which you can de-summon her. This is important because if you let her stay out, for the full phase transition, the boss will reduce her ulti's cooldown bar, which then you won't be able to ulti during phase 2. The mods I use for this run, 
Now, I'm going full on minus 50% attack. Minus 40% A speed. We'll get back to the HP in a second here. Minus 40% skill haste. Plus 30% boss HP. Plus 30% enemy attack. And then minus 30% deployment gain. Now, this fight is harder the more you put on are you increase the boss's attack or you lower your unit's HP. If you're having trouble keeping your units alive, unstunned, things like that, you're gonna want to sit here and lower these mods and just find the adjustment in which makes sense for you and your gear. And the same thing could be said about the attack and boss HP. You may sit there and adjust those based on whether or not you're phasing at least at 227. Alright, so we're just going to start off by going balls to the wall, proccing our operator as soon as possible. Granted, I had to delay just a bit for timing purposes, but you can just forward deploy everything depending on your damage. Now we're getting Choi Ina out here, and we're waiting for the special to happen so that Kirin gets a buff. If not, your wall will get buffed if you deploy that too soon. Now granted, the wall back there isn't 100% necessary, I don't believe, but I do it just so that Choi Ina has a chance of not getting stunned. But then, once the phase happens, we go ahead and deploy Chinatsu in the back. We don't want to ult during the transition, we want to ulti afterwards just so that the boss will actually somewhat focus Kurian while he's invincible. That'll give us time to deploy Orca out here. Now, we want to sit here in S2 for this phase, but we want to do it before Kurian uses his special, and then we want to sit here and definitely get it Orca's ult in during the debuff. After that, we deploy it chifu as soon as we can but make sure your proc is available before you deploy her then we want to use chinatsu ulti and the wall to sit there and give our units enough defense to hopefully not get stunned here we deploy the wardens and then as soon as we can we ulti on chinatsu and get adamant soldier out here adamant's just going to die to the special more than likely but since it doesn't move it's an easy unit to to sit there and take that hit for us. Then it's just all about crit RNG after that. Of course, Curry and doing the most damage here. Warden's kind of, you know, doing okay. Um, and then everyone else with their, their you know, they, they, they tried. Gear for this team. Now I'm running HP incoming healing on Orca with 23% crit res because Tempest gives us 35% re crit res. And then we got 36% incoming healing so our self heals do more as, lo as well as Chinasu's healing heals them up. Now I'm doing attack attack on Kurian. Now I'll, I use a maze chest so that I can get some extra ground res. So Kurian can tank a little bit more. Wardens, I'm just going all out damage. There isn't an amount of ground res you can give this unit that doesn't prevent them from getting stunned or killed, so just might as well go glass cannon. Joy Ina, I, I have on a tanky ish attack speed set. We want her getting as much DP out as she can before she gets stunned and killed. And then Shinatsu, I have on full CDR, 80% skill haste. We want her to get her to get her skills out and ulti as quick as possible, with as much ground res as possible as well. Sheen Collector's just here for uh, looks, but if I happen to ever have the DP to deploy her, um, HP HP will be what I would have ran. Shinatsu on full CDR, we want her doing as much damage as she can as well as getting her ulti as soon as possible. And then Adamant Sniper, I don't have a third set of soldier gear, so we just sat there and put what we could, attack and, well, Volcano def Death Pin. Just T7 pieces that give more ground damage. For the ship, the Latents, we do have a soldier res. 
line, which is helpful. And then a sniper ground res line, which is also helpful. Alright, so I'm going to do something a little different here. There really isn't a second team to run, so I'm going to show you a manual run of my budget team. Now we're going to go ahead and forward deploy Orca, get Choi Inan out as soon as possible, back deploy Rivet and Chinatsu just a little bit so they're not getting hit by the boss's attack, and then deploy Wardens and OAR. We get Gayun out here as soon as we can. Now we're saving the wall here, and we can go ahead and leave auto ultis on, but we're saving the wall just so that we can sit here and give our unit some defense for this ulti that the boss is about to do. That'll stop your wardens from getting stunned, which will sit there and push this, this phase a little bit faster. Now, as soon as the phase happens, we want to sit here and get a Hilde and Shinatsu back out onto the field. They're going to hold the line while your Choina gets you some DP to get your units back out. And since Wardens is our carry, we want to get them out as soon as possible. As soon as they're out, we go ahead and use our S2 because we want to sit here and push this phase a little bit faster. Now we're going to probably sit here and skip over OAR because our game actually has an ulti, which is nice. And you know, it, it's awesome that Orca's back there doing her best. She's just trying as hard as she can, just, just living her best life. But yeah, so we... Now actually we're just waiting. We're saving our, our DP and our wall so that we can sit here and live this phase transition a little bit better. We get... A, we saved our DP so we can get a Hilde back out, shield our units so that they don't get stunned or died from this phase transition, get Choyina back out so we can get some more DP. Now we're going to go ahead and deploy our OAR because we need to get something out on the field to be able to get Rivet out again. Now we go for... Since we have the Kim Hana proc, we go ahead and do Chinatsu. That's, this will go ahead and give our units some defensive buff. Give us plus one DP, which will allow us to play Rivet anyways, and then go ahead and because we're afraid that a Hilde was about to die, we went ahead and redeployed Orca, and she did end up dying, but all of our units stayed alive, and we were able to get the kill. Now, Wardens are your best DPS, so do Put your best gear on them. Gear for this team. I'm just running full tank. Orca as much ground res. Some crit res would be nice, but I don't really have any budget pieces that have that. But it's not necessarily needed. Not for this percentage anyways. Uh, we're going with the free to play CDR set on Chinatsu. Rivet, I'm just using anything that's T7 that gives ground damage. It's not even a full 51% ground damage. So attack, attack, crit damage, latents, anything, attack speed, even with range damage latents would be useful on her. Same thing for Gayun. Now I am using her EE. It is plus 10, but never T7. But we're just trying to stack as much ground damage as we can on her. You can use things like Brita. Now, like Warden here, I do have a full T7 set on it, but it doesn't have any type of uh, secondary stats that are actually going to be useful here. So it's basically the equivalent of just running any T7 Brita gear. And like I was saying, anything Brita or T7, that'll give the most ground damage. The secondary subs will be helpful if you can get them. Same with the Latents. So, you know, we just want to be tanky. We just want her tanky with her EE on and let her do her thing in the back, buffing her units and giving you DP. Rifleman, I am running some Shadow Hall gear on. It's only 44%. Uh, again, T7 gear, attack, attack, anything like that will be helpful. Attack speed will actually be helpful as well. And then A Hill Day, I have on the other free to play CDR set. We want her getting her ulti and being able to spam shields as much as possible. For the ship, the same one as I've, that I've been using, just the regular Tempest, some counter subs, some sniper subs. 
Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this helps you improve your scores this season. If you happen to be missing units in the team, you can mix and match the units to come up with something that can clear. For example, like using Curry on the budget team if you happen to own him. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're feeling extra special, you can join the Mage Army by clicking the join button. You can catch me on Discord. Link will be in the description. And if you want to help support this channel, you can find a link in the description for that as well. As always, I will see you all next time.